Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today we're going to simplify some of our implementation because we are already duplicating a lot of code and today we're going to use Restorsure in order to help us out to simplify and, and, and make it simpler to maintain the code, right? If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell so you can receive the notifications. I'll be posting the links for the previous video so you can keep it up and understand what we are trying to build in, in, the, in our overall goal. And I'll also be commenting on specific videos that you need to watch specifically to understand a little bit better uh, some of the concepts that I, I'm going to bring and already cover in previous videos. Right? So let's start. We have here our implementation, our user implementation. We already did this implementation. I'm going to run this to make, make sure everything is working. Uh, only this, this one in the bottom, it's failing because it's not defined. It's a step not defined yet. Uh, no big deal there. Um, which is this one. We're going to ignore that for now. In our implementation, our code, you're going to see that it has a lot of duplications already. We have, we have only two scenarios, three methods, and you have duplication, duplication, here, duplication. We have duplication. We have duplication. We have the duplication of the then as well. So there's a, there are a lot of duplications already. And we're going to make those simpler now. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a config class here on my step package. And this config class, uh, I'm going to create a method called uh, setup, right? And this method is going to use, it's going to have an annotation of before of cucumber. Right, so this is going to use the before it needs to be void it needs to be public so any any code here is going to be executed before each scenario so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell researcher to do to be more variables on logging right uh, i'm going to be posting the videos the video for for this specific concept because uh, in that video i explain uh, to not have duplications and I showed the, the benefits of using in more details in that video. So, but in here we're going to use Restorsure dot enable logging of request and response if validation fails. So if the validation fails, it's going to be variables on the logging and it's going to help us uh, debug any issue. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the URL uh, duplication here as well. And I'm going to do researcher.base URI. And here I'm going to say HTTP localhost1234 needs to have the port. And I'm also going to do researcher base path, which we have been using right here as well, slash API. I'm right. also going to be posting the videos that are going that are going to details on the benefits and, and, and the usage we, in the previous series, we did a lot more, te more tests using this, uh, this approach, but we did not use Cucumber, uh, but then there was pure uh, Java and rest assured. Great, so one of the things that we can do already is we can remove this. I can remove this. I can remove this as well and i also can remove this if i re-execute my test control r we have the test passing only the not implemented uh not implemented right another thing that we're going to remove is this content type here here we need to improve this as well and there is a way to tell Restorsure that I have a request. So this is my request, and this is the response, that I have a common request. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say request specification, and I want a new request spec builder. 
I'm using dot at the very end because this is in the documentation of Rest when we are doing this in Java, usually the dot is at the beginning, but in Rest Assured they use at the end. And I'm going to say set content type because we are using the content type here. So I'm setting the content type to use content type JSON and build it. So it's going to build that for us and it's going to use in every test. This is amazing, right? So I'm also going to be posting the videos for the details on the request spec builder. Uh, I, I had a one detailed view just for this. And we're also going to remove the, the response. As you can imagine, it's rest assured dot response specification is going to be a new response spec builder and now the content type the expected content type is json as well right and i need to build now i can come here and i can remove this 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 as well, and this one. And I can re-execute everything, Control R, and we're only going to see the failing um, undefined step, right? Great. How can we check this? So I can override this. I can come back here and I say, I want this to be back to content type JSON, and I want this to be XML. And if I rerun it, we're going to have a failure. You're going to see that this is very verbose, passing headers and cookies and the body specifically. And you're going to see the failure XML, right? Great. Because it it's not XML that was returning, right? Before we fix this, I want to show you another thing. Is usually on on, on APIs you need to authorize and authenticate yourself, right? So you're going to authorize, you're going to have access to something and authorization is the different levels of access that you have. So you might have access to read, but you might not have access to delete or create, for instance. Your authentication is going to let you in and your authorization is going to tell what level of access you have, right? So one of the things that you're going to do, you're going to need to do is tell that, rest assured that you you had, you, you need to pass a token, a, a, a authorization, a, a sort of like a password. And usually this is a header with the name of author, authorization. And here I'm just going to say get token. And we're going to create this method right here. It's going to be a private string get token. And I'm going to return just a string great access. Right? Why just a string? This is you can put whatever you want in this method related to how you can generate your token. Your token is a hash that's going to be a pretty big hash, uh, which serves as your password, right? So whatever you need, just put well, the token here, how you get the token, right? Not the token itself, but how you get the token. And it's going to serve the same thing. If I re-execute the test that was failing, you're going to see that my headers now has the Great access, right? So, but rest assured has different ways of you uh, to deal with authentication. Right? And there are a couple of ways that you can do this. You can put straight in your method in, in your test, or you can put in rest assured authentication the same way that we did here. I can just put here rest assured dot authentication and whatever you need to do or you can set it here as well you can say set auth and your authentication here as well right 
So there are various ways that you can deal with this. Uh, we we can also, uh, yeah, that's, that, that you you can authenticate with use and password, a basic use and password. There are, there are various ways you have formal authentication that you can do. Just go to the documentation and it's going to tell you how you can authenticate yourself. Right. So re let me remove this because we don't need this anymore and let me re-execute everything now we have everything passing except the undefined scenario and that's basically it but you can look at the code and you can see that's much cleaner we don't have the same duplication it's it's much easier to understand what's happening uh this is going to be this is going to play an important role for us because now our our system our url it's being in it's only in one place which is going to make it easier to maintain uh it's still not ideal because if you are running this in, in a ci the url is going to be a different one or if you have a different uh testing server or testing environment and you might need to have this uh in a different address so that we're going to be dealing with that in the future, but bear with me for a second. We're going to be doing the testing. Uh, we're going to be dedicating ourselves to the testing itself and then look into the infrastructure as a whole uh, later on, right? But we're going to get there. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, hit the bell so you can receive the notification. If you like the video, give the thumbs up and I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you.